Hello and welcome to Yokai Footy Shorts, a new look Yokai Footy for season 2024. My name is Megan Waters and I am so excited as always to be joined by AFL legend, my brother, Andy Cracker. Megzi, great to see you as always, my sister. Legend, not quite sure about that, but let's get stuck into it. Let's get stuck into it. We'll be bringing you the best of First Nations footy each and every week. Now, opening round, wasn't it full of excitement? Friday night, you know I love Friday night footy. The Baggers versus the Lions at the Gabba. It was a sellout crowd and an absolute nail-biter of a finish. Well, how good was it to see Harry Mackay get rid of his goal-kicking woes, but there was plenty to mention about the last couple of years, so that would have been great for him and the Carlton Football club to be able to come back from a 46 point deficit kicking 11 of the last 14 goals and you see how much emotion um, you know was played out here out in the Gabba and how much it meant to the to the baggers faithful. Yeah it was certainly a game of grit I thought they were goners at half time so they uh, certainly got the redemption that I think that they would have been looking for after last season in that prelim but it was really great to see Zachy Williams back out there he's an absolute favourite of ours here at Yokai Footy and it was a very emotional moment so it has become this week's Yokai moment seeing him back out there for the first time in 18 months obviously he was out with that ACL injury so not only has he had a really tough time injury wise but he's had a pretty tough time personally as well so this certainly brought a big smile to my face actually had a bit of a tear in my eye watching his post-match press up absolutely and then to be able to see his baby girl in the uh, in the circle singing the song after the game was so special as well but we were lucky enough to speak to him last year and he did mention about that long road to recovery it's a lonely place you've got nothing to look forward to at the end of the week and except another training session so for him to be able to come out on the other side Friday night out on the Gabba happy and smiling and more importantly the Blues getting the win was beautiful to see. The Baggers will be happy about that for sure and while we're still speaking on the Baggers do want to send a little bit of love to Sam Doherty as we know he was ruled out with that ACL injury as well which is never nice for anybody and while we're on the topic of ACLs it was absolutely heartbreaking to see what happened to young Kitty Coleman on the other side of the um, field there. Oh, it's so hard to even watch that replay back. It sends a bit of a churn in my belly, that one. And um, unfortunately, yeah, he's been ruled out with that ACL as well. Yeah, devastating for the young man. He's an absolute young star of the game. His ball use, run and dash off the half back line for the Brizzy Lions is something that uh, you know we've all come accustomed to over the last couple of years. Changed the game in the prelim last year to be able to get them a grand final berth. If the Lions would have won, it would have been close to a Norm Smith medalist. So he's an important player and he'll be sorely missed for the Lions this year. Well, we wish a speedy recovery to, um, to young Kitty Coleman. But speaking of rising stars of the game, somebody that I want to talk about who was a standout in this game, of course, Richmond and the Gold Coast Suns. There was plenty of build up, there was a lot of talking points and there's a lot to dissect on this game but for me it was young Mally Roses from the NT, Territory Boy. He really stood up, kicked three goals and uh, he really was a rising star of this game. Well his first one was a little bit of a gimme. I don't know if that was the 15 <laughs> metres but uh, there was no complaints and a beautiful finish on the left peg there to be able to kick his first for the day. 13 disposals, three goals too. Probably could have kicked six, I would have thought, Megzi. But as a small forward, you need to be able to play in front. He reads the ball so well in flight when it comes inside 50. And his pressure is outstanding as well. And for him, to be, his third goal here is one I'd like to talk about. So Nathan Broad just took the footy over the line. You thought the pressure was enough around that the free kick wasn't given, but it was. But I do like that because it tries to keep the ball in play and it puts the back line under pressure. And Mully was able to convert and be able to kick his third, as I mentioned. But... I'll, I'll do like that, but it just needs to be consistent with the young boys throughout the 2024 season. Well said, brother. Now, I want to talk about GWS. And this is the first time we've seen the expansion clubs at the top of the ladder. But could this be the year for GWS? They absolutely kicked off the season in fine form. Megzi, I'd love seeing the orange tsunami <laughs> up at the GWS stadium. It was absolutely beautiful. The run and dash off of the half-back line they had. They had numbers streaming inside 50, which was a pretty similar game style to Collingwood, but I just love their pressure. They, uh, from go to woe, they put the pressure on Collingwood. It wasn't their greatest nights. Uh, up forward, Callum Brown, how good was he? Mm. Kicked the five goals, had some really good mitts, and he struck the ball really well, as we'll see from this next set shot. Stevie Coniglio, he's an absolutely damaging player. Love seeing him at his best, and uh, as I said, Brown. Didn't need too many, um, too many shots and uh, did convert very nicely in front of goal. 
It was a very exciting game to watch. Certainly not Collingwood's best, that's for sure. But look, GWS have a pretty favourable draw coming up. They've got North Melbourne coming up this week, West Coast in round two, then they've got a bye, and then they've got the Gold Coast Suns in round four. So this could really set them up for a pretty solid start to the season. Yeah, it certainly could, Megzi. And uh, the great thing to see is the, they, they started off really well and they had great gain a lot of confidence to be able to beat the benchmark in Collingwood uh, from last year. So they've done it. They've uh, started off well, so it's uh, the destiny is in their hands. Well, that's it from us, brother. It's uh, been good to be back. We will be back next week and every week following on Yokai Footy Shorts. So we will see you then.